and I will pray in the language of heaven because Siku Kikabiyama is in control of all that we have been doing and will continue to do until Biafra is restored and all the suffering indigenous populations in the damnable zoological republic are set free. Chineke na nke purumi janine chuko kikabe mbo yende fugona jaha hanso ya mambo nine. Onyo bonani ya nati. Eli gwano wana wakebe hona nyagine brega mrage no miko ye bende genese bede ngozi. Anyi wene to yi. Agwa ni gatu matu ojo nine nke ndiro. Iwe nyanyi endo la lakedi nuwe dono bo chinketa. Anyi wene asene hi jammani no toni ne dira hanso ye. Onyo bonani ya kikini no no badraka ya. And you were not Okuri, Nasigan and Kamamani get Kelly and Kojo Mani Kelly, and you were not Jagemma, where Neto you were not Soproge, Nisu Mugin, a Bundi Kundi, where Zoo Kumba or Ha, Kahawe Chequa, Alonso Biafron, Machine Ken, Hindipuran Yanqua, no Mecca Taka Candino, where Alonso Biafron, Machine Ken, and Kabinu. I want a Gatama to join in and Candino, Mandana, whatever in the Dichi, Machine Ken, you never can get to an opportunity. Ani wene tori, wena si wene wanyi na chine ke nanke prumi hene ime. Onyo po nani ya na zopota. Onyo po nani ya po opu ya nine buye na emen. Ani wena si eze po pete nkosi. Nano tuto ne jamma na ansopuro. Si te ne bigebi maru ne bigebi. Ise, ise, ise. Ise, ise, ise. Hello, thank you very much for joining us this morning, afternoon, and night, depending on your time zone. Welcome to Sunrise on Radio Biafra 102.1 FM. Today is the 19th day of February, 2024, and the time now is just three minutes past the hour of five in the holy and blessed land of Biafra. So I say welcome to you. I say good morning to you. Thank you for waking up with us. Thank you for joining us this early morning. My name is Sochima Mbanali. And it is an absolute pleasure to be with you here uh, every morning on Radio Biafra. Thank you very much. For waking up with us thank you very much for being part of this program this morning thank you very much for the time um this is usually not a very good time for uh, nigerians to for people to wake up in nigeria it is usually a very it is very very early for most people to wake up but the fact that you are awake at this time and that you are part of this uh, program this morning, I do appreciate it. Now, as we begin this program, let us listen, listen to this very interesting rendition by some of our elders. Please listen to this. I am sure you will enjoy it as much as I do. I 
Yes, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for being part of this program this wonderful morning. This is a Monday morning, the 19th of February 2024. And the time now is 8 minutes past the hour of 5 in the holy and blessed land of Biafra. The song I had just played was um, from our elders who chant, who chanted songs that um, very morale boosting songs. Uh, they said you cannot win Mazin Namdekano, despite all the Python dances, despite all the billions that you have spent, you cannot defeat Mazin Namdekano. You cannot defeat IPOB, and that is where we stand. That is why we are here. That is why we are doing this job. That is why we wake up every morning to be here on this radio to listen to the good news, to be able to conscientize ourselves, to be able to motivate ourselves. Remember that one person cannot, uh, they say one tree does not make a forest. One tree does not make a forest. It is because of the job that you are doing. It is because of the job that I am doing. That is why we have gotten as far as we have gotten. I mean, look at how far we have come since uh, three years now. Look at how far we have come. If at this moment you find any reason to be afraid or to shake, then look how back, how far we have come and pat yourself on the back and say, we have come a long way. And all thanks to the Directorate of States of the Indigenous People of Biafra, the ESN, and every principal officer, everybody who is serving in one way or the other to ensure that this project uh, sees its um, conclusion, that it gets to the point uh, of uh, conclusiveness. And therefore, I want to thank every single person. You know that this is Sunrise and we are streaming live on Facebook. We are streaming on Radio Biafra on Facebook as well as Radio Biafra Motherland on Facebook. We are also live on various apps like IPOB Community Radio and Radio Biafra. These are low data usage apps that you can download from any app store. All you need to do is just search for Radio Biafra. Also search for IPOB Community Radio and you will download this. You can also join us by visiting our website on IPOB.org and radiobiafra.co. If you are anywhere in Biafra land and in some parts of the zoo, you can tune in by going to 102.1 FM on your transistor radio. Therefore, I encourage you to join this Our March to Mental Emancipation by sharing this information with every single person that you can. Share this information with people. Do not forget to like and follow us on our various platforms on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. This is Radio Biafra. And once more, this morning, I call for the release, immediate release of Mazen Namdekano. Despite all the Python dances, despite all the tr troubles, despite all the chaos that Nigeria government have caused, Mazen Namdekano is still winning. Because Mazen Namdekano did not commit any crime. Mazen Namdekano did not commit any crime. Therefore, he cannot lose. What is there to lose when he did not commit any crime? Therefore, I call on Nigeria government to obey the ruling of various courts of competent jurisdiction, which declared the abduction and continued incarceration of our leader illegal and the crime against humanity. Mazin Namdekano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, was abducted from Kenya by Nigeria government on the 19th of June, 2021. And Mazin Namdekano was tortured in Kenya for eight days, after which he was forcefully brought into Nigeria. And since then, he has been unlawfully held in the dungeon of the DSS in Abuja. You may recall that on the 20th of July, 2022, the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention declared that the extraordinary rendition of Mazin Namdekano is a violation of international human rights conventions and also ordered his immediate and unconditional release. It is such a shame that Nigeria government has continued 
to jettison this opinion, they have continued to snub it just like they have done to the ruling of various courts in Nigeria. The ruling of various courts in Nigeria that discharged and acquitted Mazen Namdekano. Instead, the Nigeria government has pursued every effort to inflict severe physical and psychological torture on this innocent man. I want to take you back to the 14th day of September 2017 when the Nigeria government invaded the house of this innocent man in an attempt to assassinate him. The Nigeria government invaded the house of Mazen Namdekano in order to assassinate him. His home at Afaru Kuibeku. Despite the case of Mazen Namdekano being in their own court, their own court, they still invaded his house to kill him. Thankfully, Mazen Namdekano managed to escape but the Nigeria government ended up killing at least 28 people in his home. They did not leave it just there. The Nigeria government then trailed him to Kenya, where they abducted him in 2021. And since then, Mazin Namdekano has been going through severe torture in the hands of the zoo government. Now, this is the part where I ask you what crime did Mazin Namdekano commit? What crime did this man commit? Because we all know this is an innocent man. An innocent man who saw Nigeria for exactly what it is. A crime against humanity. The continued existence of Nigeria is a crime against humanity. In a bid to ensure the survival of our race, Mazen Namdekano started creating awareness. He started conscientizing us. He started liberating us from the shackles of slavery from the shackles of death. And then he informed us about the, the hellhole that Nigeria is and the disaster that is coming to it. And if the government of Nigeria is really interested in any way in preventing these words, these uh, wise words of Mazen Namdekano, they would have put plans into motion in order to ensure that Nigeria does not uh, um, nosedive into the, 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 the mess that it is into today. But no, they did not. Rather, they sought for his life. Rather, they pursued him because they are more interested in the disintegration of Nigeria. They are more interested in the nosedive of Nigeria. They are more interested in the destruction of Nigeria than any other person. Nigeria politicians are interested in the explosion of Nigeria than anybody else. Do not doubt that for a moment. And the reason I said this is it's everywhere. A government that derives joy in abducting people, in breaking international laws, a government that derives joy in saying one thing while doing the other. A government that is a democratic government that claims to be a democratic government but behaving in undemocratic ways in a feudal manner. Uh, how can that government be, how can such a country be sustainable? Nigeria is a contraption and therefore I am calling for the immediate, of, um, for the immediate release of Mazen Namdekano and the immediate release of all Biafrans that are being tortured in uh, several detention facilities of the Nigeria government. The truth of the matter is that Nigeria is not helping the interest of Nigerians. Nigeria is not for the benefit of Nigeria. Rather, it is for the benefit of the slave masters, the slave traders. And we know that um, Britain is the highest slave trader, the highest slave trader. And today, that slave trade still continues. Nigeria serves as a testament to the continued existence of slavery. I mean, what else is there when a man who is campaigning for the rights of the people um, to be observed, the rights of the people to be observed, is abducted and called a terrorist, when those who are actual terrorists, who are killing, rampaging, abducting, raping, people are treated like champions. They have been called that they are warriors. They are, that's what they have been called, warriors. 
whereas those who champion the cause of the people are called terrorists. You can now imagine that Nigeria is not sustainable. Nigeria cannot function. Therefore, Nigeria is a threat to the security of lives. Nigeria is a threat to the security of properties. Nigeria is a threat to the security of trade in that region and in Africa as a whole. I must begin by um, bringing it to your attention, our people, that we have been cautioned to stay away from those who are organizing protests in the name of Nigeria and in the name of solving Nigeria problems. Because we understand that Nigeria problems uh, cannot be solved. Um, Nigeria, the problem of Nigeria cannot be solved by protest. Rather, they understand how the solution of the Nigerian problem can be fixed, and they are against the fixing of um, the solving of the Nigerian problem. And the man who presented the solution to the Nigerian problem is in the DSS dungeon. And those who are calling for a protest, they have not protested for the release of this man because the release of this man is the simple solution to the Nigerian problem. You don't need to go protesting and saying, oh, money is this and that and that. No, protest for the release of this man who gave Nigeria the solution, the blueprint to solving your problems. All your problems will disappear as soon as this man is out. So we have been warned to stay away from those organizing protests in the name of Nigeria and solving Nigeria problems. This is as some people whose agenda is not known are planning and calling upon everyone to join them in protesting. These same people have watched the government abduct us. They have watched the government abduct and kill our loved ones. They have watched as our organs are harvested and being sold in the black market, being sold in the Nigerian market. They have watched the Nigeria government knock down our houses while they clapped. They have laughed while the government burnt and demolished our businesses. They have actually called on the government not to release our leaders. Any Biafran who is interested in being part of such protest have been asked to go to the north or to the west to join them, not in the east, because this could be a ploy by these haters of our people to try to destabilize our land and destroy all the gains that we have made so far in the control of insecurity in our land. You are advised to report those who are planning to destabilize our land through this protest to the leadership of IPOB through their inquiry lines. Uh, I must ask you to ensure that you make a um, report of such. Utilize the lines, the opportunity that has been provided for you and um, contribute to the well-being of your nation. Contribute to the well-being of your nation, the Biafra, the great Biafra nation. Anybody calling for protest is not in line with um, what we are doing. Anybody calling for a protest, uh, which is in line with the Nigerian program, is just uh, trying to bring distraction to what we are doing. And you must report such uh, to the leadership for, um, for such to be tackled. For such to be tackled so we will i will go ahead and um play this clip again this music again i enjoy this music and i, I am sure you do as well let me play this music again um before we really get into today's um affairs i did say that today we'll talk about the um the the food stock that was um stopped from coming into other parts of the country from the from Niger State. Um, we did not, the person I was supposed to bring in, I was unable to have a conversation with him uh, concerning the issue for us to rub minds together and um, understand each other. So we have to uh, move it, we have to postpone it, but uh, it will be very soon. And I hope that all of us can partake of it because um, we have experienced this firsthand today. They are saying, it is not going to any other part of the country. But uh, we, we can be very aware of those who are the real targets. Uh, we can also monitor other directions that food is traveling to and um, monitor if our land, uh, we are the only people that are being affected. And it doesn't even matter what their plans are. The, the truth of the matter is that 
we are self-sufficient and we can be self-sufficient for as long as we want. And um, the time to prove uh, that we haven't been just sleeping, that time is now. We must prove ourselves. Um, they can keep their foods. I mean, these are foods they even buy. You know, they do not even produce these things. Uh, the few people who produce it, they have brought in their terrorists to chase them out of the land. Uh, because they do not care about you. They do not care about me. They do not care whether any Nigerian is just a, a, a problem to them. So all they care about is the destruction of Nigerians. But let us listen to this uh, clip again as we move ahead with our programs today. Deva. <laughs> Yes, welcome back. The, the information from the song is that they cannot win this battle against Mazin Namdekano, this battle against IPOB, this battle against Bia Friends. All of us, we are in this battle together. All Bia Friends, we are in this together. Therefore, I call upon you guys to support the Eastern Security Network. These are people who are doing wonderfully well to ensure that our land is safe, to ensure that we can plant our crops, to ensure that we can go to the farms, we can go to the market, that to ensure that our land is safe from these invaders. You see that they invade the land and then they stop food from getting into your own land. And this is despite the fact that Nigeria ranks 109 out of 125 countries in the Global Hunger Index. This is despite this fact, but um, the, and, and you must also understand that it is the government policy. It is not as if uh, the people are just um, doing whatever they want to do, stopping. No, no, no. It is government that is ensuring this policy not just ordinary people so this is very very important for us to understand um what is happening here this this let me read you this information this says global hunger index nigeria ranks 109 out of 125 countries 94 percent of nigerians are unable to afford healthy meals 94 percent of nigerians are able to afford healthy meals and um, let me read this a bit for you. And it says, the, globe, the 2023 Global Hunger Index ranked Nigeria 109 out of 125 countries, indicating serious hunger level, with an estimated 26.5 million Nigerians projected to face acute hunger in 2024. Now, in continuation, let, let us leave this here. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll have um, enough people indicate their interest in being part of the conversation tomorrow um, concerning the blockade of food um, to other parts of, uh, of uh, Nigeria. Um, I just wanted to point this out, bring this uh, information out so that uh, we look at it and look at the policies and the, the, 
the the way that the Nigeria government operates and see that this is a deliberate effort. This what the way Nigeria government operates is a deliberate effort in order to impoverish Nigerians. Now let let us look at recent events happening in Nigeria in order to prove to you that this is a deliberate effort. Let us um, start with um, this news. It says. Knox as Tinubu spotted sleeping at 37th AU summit in Addis Ababa. And this is uh, Tinubu, the president of the country that is supposed to solve the problems of the country. The, the man who came into uh, the position of a president under questionable uh, uh, circumstances. Um, the video is out there of how the election was highly rigged, very irregular. And uh, nothing was done. I mean, even before uh, the courts was able to really do something, they, uh, uh, what is it called again? Echo was already forced him on the people. So you can now understand the gravity of the problem. You understand that the problem is not just in Nigeria. The problem goes outside the borders of Nigeria. Now, they are not interested in fixing Nigeria they are more interested in sustaining the unsustainable Nigeria, in sustaining the unsustainable of, in uh, the unsustainable Nigeria. It says Knox as Tinubu spotted sleeping at 37th AU summit in Addis Ababa. Chief Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who utilized taxpayers' fund for his journey to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to partake in the 37th Ordinary Session of the African Union AU Heads of State and Government, has drawn attention for being observed sleeping during the summit. And this, this is a country, this is a, a president coming from um, a country that is being ravaged by hunger, where 94% of Nigerians are unable to afford healthy meals where 94% of Nigerians are unable to afford healthy meals. Now, he went to Addis Ababa um, to a two-day meeting summit in AU, uh, which the team is 2024 Educate an African Fit for the 21st Century. He went there only to sleep. Now, how will such a person have the kind of education, the kind of information to transform the economy from a hunger-ridden economy to a, 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 the food basket of uh, West Africa or of whatever. It's just a food basket where people can eat, at least satisfy themselves, even if they don't have to export, at least satisfy themselves. How can that be when such a person is sleeping? This is because these people are not committed to ensuring that the, a solution to the Nigerian problem is... Uh, is implemented if they were committed to such they would not have abducted an innocent man who offered them a solution they would not have gone to the land that they went to in order to abduct mazin namdikano for offering them a solution what solution did mazin namdikano offer them implement democracy you say you practice democracy whereas what your output shows that you are not practicing democracy then mazin namdikano said Democracy cannot function when the principles that you are using are not democratic. You cannot say you are going to the democracy you are practicing is going to function when you are applying principles different from the principles of democracy. You either apply democratic principles in a state of democracy for it to function or you do not. Or you say completely, we are not practicing democracy. We are practicing a feudal system. We are practicing autocracy. We are practicing whatever. Then the people will know, okay, this is actually what is being practiced. But you cannot say that your democratic country will be sustainable, whereas you are not practicing democratic principles. That was just what Mazen Namnikano said. And offered them a solution. These are the principles in order to make your country function. But they said no. We do not want it. We'd rather have you in jail so that you cannot get, so that you will not tell more people about how to make the country better. Why are they doing that? Because they are psychologically terrorizing the people. We have been having this conversation since a couple of days now about the impact of um, psycho, uh, uh, the Nigerian 
um, the psychological impact of Nigeria on Nigerians. We have been having this conversation for a couple of days now. If you are just joining us, um, please go back to the, um, our programs. We started on Saturday on this topic, and uh, today is Monday. We are here to bring it to a conclusive end. And remember that um, uh, during the course, we did get to a conclusion that poverty is also a contributing factor. And um, I, of course, we all know that a hungry man is an angry man, and this is the reason why they are not interested in learning uh, 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 new ways of ensuring that uh, the poverty and the hunger, the 94% of Nigerians who are uh, hungry, who are unable to provide food for themselves, can be able to do that. No, they are not interested because Nigeria is designed by design Nigeria is designed to ensure that people do not survive, that it implodes, and that Nigerians are caught up in the process of that implosion. That is the design of Nigeria. And we did say that um, uh, we did explore the impacts, the different impacts that Nigeria is having on Nigerians. We did also explore various psychological challenges that Nigerians are living on a daily from experiences. Um, we did say that um, the impact are low self-esteem, mental health issues, low life expectancy. And we did talk about low self-esteem. Uh, somebody trying to sell another person's story uh, about himself. Um, someone like, uh, yeah, let, let me give you this. Some, many people have said that um, the story in the Bible is not an original story of Romans. And even the Romans, they have confirmed that that is not their original story. And that goes back to show you that you must be able to have um, um, a low self-esteem to be able to sell another person's story as your story. And even while selling it, you, 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 you do not want to properly say that this isn't my story, but you just change the names and sell it as your story. It will also, you will also have serious low self-esteem to be able to be racist against another person because it takes somebody who doesn't like themselves not to like somebody else. If you love yourself, you love the next person next to you. It is just as simple as that. And then it will also take somebody who is suffering from low self-esteem to be able to force another person to have low self-esteem. And that is what has happened. And then Africans today, especially Nigerians, are suffering from low self-esteem. And these, they have uh, 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 fully implemented using the Nigerian system. The Nigerian system has created people of low self-esteem, people who go out there selling stories of a wonderful Nigeria, knowing fully well that they are telling those stories hungry, knowing fully well that 94% of Nigerians go to bed hungry, knowing fully well that their government is not committed to ensuring a successful story for the Nigerian people. That is why their government goes to summits and sleeps. This is not the first time, nor that, neither is it the second time. I mean, the president would say to them, why would he not sleep if during his campaign, the campaign that brought him into the position, he slept all through the campaign. So why shouldn't he sleep now? Why shouldn't he sleep now? That, that's what I'm sure that's what he's asking himself. Why shouldn't he sleep now? And it is also low self-esteem that is keeping Nigerians from totally emancipating themselves. Because people feel that they are not enough. People feel because they've been taught all through their lives that you are not enough. It had to take somebody from Britain to come and give a river that is just right there next to you a name. It takes somebody from Britain to come and even discover the river right next to you and give it a name. It took somebody from Britain to come and stop the killing of twins in your land. It took someone from Britain to come and show you God, even though you answer the name of God. It took someone from Britain to come and tell you, hey, somebody actually created this universe, even though that you name your cities in the name of uh, somebody who created the universe. So that is the story that they are trying to tell you, and that is the story that the educational system has been used to tell you. Now, when you go 
out to the world. The world even tells you a different story. Tell you, oh, Nigeria, giant of Africa. And then you have identity crisis because you're coming from a place where you understand that you are a nobody. The country has told you that you're a nobody and you have bought it. And you have your low self-esteem. And now you go out there and they're telling you about the end of Africa. You have identity crisis. And you don't even know where to begin. Therefore, you find a way to adapt into any situation, into any society that you have found yourself. Therefore, you become assimilated. You give birth to children. Your children will never come back. When they come back, they stay a day, mosquito bites, and they are even almost dead. They say they don't want to come back again. They want to travel. And you, 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 you come home, you marry at home, you say, oh, let me marry from home. So that uh, my children, tomorrow they will come back when I'm old, somebody will look after me. And you marry at home, you find out that uh, you, even to come back at 80, you cannot. Because how will you leave a good place and come to, to a place that there is no life? that it is this place is taking out life from its people i was having a conversation with somebody the other day and he uh she was saying to me that oh i'm i'm trying not to travel overseas because i want to raise get my child raised in nigeria for up to a certain age so that he can come back and i laughed i said to him do you know how many 80 something year olds how i i first started by saying how many people have you seen older people that you've seen that are living in america in europe in wherever and they are old they say oh let us come back home how many and then tell me how many older people in nigeria perhaps retired people and all of that who are now beginning to travel how many you will now see that it doesn't matter how many how many years you spent in nigeria in Hedemadema. when you leave nigeria you understand that there is life you begin to breathe proper air why would you want to go to a place to suffocate yourself? That is why we are here making sure that the zoo comes to an end so that you, out of that dust, we can be able to create something that can allow us to breathe. We talked about the mental health issues as a consequence of uh, Nigeria, the, the psychological challenges that Nigeria is posing on Nigerians. Talking about how poverty affects the mind, how poverty is a disease of the mind, and how it contributes to a high rate of mental disorder, such as depression, such as anxiety, such as substance abuse. Um, we talked about chronic stress, uh, where people now, they no longer even take care of what the cause of the stress. They, they lash out on others, just people around them. They lash out on people around them because of the chronic stress that Nigeria poses to them. And we also talked about low life expectancy, talking about individuals uh, uh, living in poverty, often facing higher likelihood of premature death. We did not even put in line the, the question where organ harvesting is sanctioned by the state. I mean, the police are there harvesting organs. You have a governor in Imo State today who recruited somebody that was expelled from one of their security networks. Somebody that was expelled from the police. And then he recruited the person back into the police and brought the person into Imo State to kill and harvest organs. We're talking about Tiger, Tiger Base in Imo State being a center for organ harvesting. We're talking about uh, uh, Kozo being a harvesting an, an, an area where Nigeria police are harvesting organs. Tiger Base is also Nigeria security, uh, Nigeria police harvesting organs. We talk about uh, uh, um, Nigeria Army being part and parcel of the protection of terrorists, Fulani herdsmen. We talk about all of these things. We talk about the abduction of people. We talk about five people dying daily from just one detention facility in Okuzosas. Just one place. Five people being killed by the cops, by the police, those who are supposed to protect the lives of Nigerians. Then you understand the psychological impact of Nigeria on Nigerians. It is not something that we must take for granted. It is important that all of us understand, especially Nigerians who are still proudly going around talking about being the giant of Africa, still being proud about those who are going out there promoting the, 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 the this picture of Nigeria. You understand AFCON, what happens with AFCON, with football and all, 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 all what you have. 
Nigeria government will not promote you. They will not help you. They will not even build facilities to allow you to grow. But when you struggle and get yourself to the point where you become recognizable and international communities, they come for you, they buy you and say, oh, come play for us and what have you. Nigeria government come and say, oh, Afghan, come and play. And then you come back to play. Why? Because you lack identity. You need somebody to, you have, you you, you are suffering from one of these um, um, issues that I talked about, which is low self-esteem. You're suffering from low self-esteem. That is why you will go to represent a country that doesn't care about you. A country that does not identify with you. A country that it derives joy in pushing you down. A country that you should not even be proud of identifying. A country that you did not name. Your ancestors did not name. A name that come, came out of slavery. A name that came out of slavery. And you find people who are playing there. And the worst is that you still find people who are busy supporting, who are busy saying, oh, we are fans, we are watching, and all of that. It is because people have low self-esteem. People are trying to find their identity. People do not know who they are. And that is the impact of Nigeria on Nigerians. Now, let us conclude by um, continuing on the coping mechanisms. Remember yesterday, we did speak about one of the coping mechanisms. We said that coping mechanisms are the strategies that people use in order to manage the situation that they have found themselves, especially the psychological uh, uh, suppression, psychological subjugation that they have found themselves. They therefore try to find uh, uh, a, a strategies that they can use to manage the, um, the problems that they have found themselves. And yesterday we spoke about one. We spoke about acceptance and adaptability. We said that people readily in Nigeria accept the condition for what it is and they have adapted. That is why people become a useful tool. They have now become a useful tool. Look at your life. What are you? Look at the AFCON I mentioned earlier, the football players. What are they? They are useful tools. I used to, I love watching UFC. I love watching UFC. And there are these two guys who represent Nigeria. Now there are three who represent Nigeria in UFC. World renowned, I mean, people who are known all over the world for UFC. And they are flying the flag of Nigeria flying the flag that is busy harvesting the organs of their people, flying the flag that is Usman is from somewhere in the north. He's from the north, somewhere from the north. But look at his land being ravaged. He's there flying the flag of Nigeria. And you tell me that is not a symbol of low self-esteem. I wish these guys can understand the mess that they are in by flying that flag. I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, one of my favorites, um, one of my favorites. He he has taken a break now. I love watching his fights. He he goes to show you the power of uh, being a Nigerian. Being uh, a, a, a one of those who are from that that area, the indigenous people living in Nigeria, the power, the strength that they have. That guy reminds me of what it means. To come from that area, to be originally from that area, to be indigenous to that area. And imagine how far Israel Adesanya could have gone without this Nigerian tag on him. Imagine how far. It, only the stress of Nigeria is enough to pull anybody down. Only that stress of Nigeria. Only that, but sometimes because of the way Nigeria has been sold out there, we want to oh, identify with it, oh, the largest, the, the giant, and what have you. Those who call you the giant of Africa, they know that your country is not the giant. They know. Whether a ordinary man on the street, they know Nigeria is not. They know Nigeria is nothing. They even despise Nigeria. So why are we identifying as that? Why have we accepted that tag? Why have we accepted that, oh, this is our condition, that we have not no power? Why have we accepted it? That is because we accepted it, we have now adapted to it. Why? Do you, do you even understand that you have accepted it to begin with? I'm talking to Nigerians, those who 
go around joke, talking about being Nigerians. Do you understand that accepting that you're a Nigerian means you have accepted what Nigeria has to offer you and you have adapted to it? I mean, look at uh, NSAD when it happened. People adapted so quickly to it. Look at money rising. The next thing you find people doing videos and saying, oh, hey, you know, no matter what, people will survive. Even if, so that even those who have not adapted, they can now further promote adaptability so that people can easily adapt. So that people can easily adapt. People find creative ways to overcome whatever uh, uh, um, side of their brain that is saying to them, you know what, this is not fit for you. This is not human. This is inhuman. You shouldn't be living in such a situation. They find creative ways in order to overcome such a voice. Are you one of those who finds creative ways in order to overcome such? You find things that you say like uh, uh, Niger, uh, if you fit survive for Niger, if it survive for anywhere. You know, all of those things that people find ways, creative things to say, to do in order to, to, to keep living in slavery. Because you have accepted, because you have adapted. You do not want to overcome those obstacles. That is why you have created a reason for you to continue. That is one of the things you find, one of the problems that you see on people who have been med mentally subjugated. When you are med mentally subjugated, you find a way to shape yourself into whatever shape that the the... the 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 mental picture you have been given to people have accepted their position and today people are not rising up in the north in as much as oh they say food uh, uh, do you understand that in nigger state nigger that stopped food from going to other countries people there are still dying of hunger do you understand and they are using the excuse of those who are dying of hunger to say because of that we are not taking the food to other places which is a lie because those foods are not even being produced there they are being imported there even the the what is it called i'm telling you that this is a national project of the nigeria government this is not just nigger state. This is a national project of the Nigerian government. And I'm telling you this because if you go and search online now, you find news of the, the what is it called? These uh, people at the borders. They, how they have been stopping food from coming in. And they are talking about uh, uh, what do you think is going to happen when there is so much poverty and there is no food? What do you think is going to happen? And you have a porous border. People will be smuggling food in. You are even supposed to allow people smuggle food in to help your masses, the people that will contrib that are contributing to, to, to the economy, the manpower. How can they contribute to the economy when they have not eaten? They do not want Nigeria economy to develop. They do not want Nigeria to progress. They want Nigerians steadily on the ground, steadily being suppressed so that they can take over their lands. And I am telling you, believe you me, this is a national project. The economic uh, um, uh, strangulation of Nigerians is a national project. This food, uh, uh, um, food being stopped from coming into Nigeria, this is a national project. And it is just beginning. It is just beginning. Those who say they, they crop food, they, 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 they harvest food and they, they farm and all of that. Why is there hunger so much in their land? Why am I reading reports today that says that people are actually migrating in droves from the north to the south? If you guys are the food producers of the country, why then is that the case? It is because they are not. They are not. And today... They are having a national project of further impoverishing you. Now, um, one of the coping mechanisms, let us leave acceptance and adaptability because that is a topic on its own. It can take us the entire day, entire week even, to talk about how our behaviors um, shows that we have accepted and we have adapted to the situation. You've, uh, For instance, let me give you this last excuse, this last reason uh, before we go into the next one because my excuse is that it is something that you can see by yourself, you can witness by yourself. You find out that most Nigerians don't want to talk about the Nigerian problem. 
most of them do not want to talk about it. Look at your politicians that came to you and said to you, vote during election. Now they are quiet. I'm talking about the celebrities you have. These are politicians. Look at your pastors. They are all talking about nonsense. Totally different. Look at Nigerians, even those who travel overseas. They don't want to talk about Nigeria. They don't even want to read news about Nigeria. They have accepted and they have found ways to adapt. Now, let's go to number two. Number two is Nigerians now create social support networks. They, so, they create social support networks. You find, like I said, people coming on, on social media, creating, uh, uh, what do you call it, contents that allows others to indulge themselves and forget their sorrow, forget whatever the killings going on. And things are happening in Nigeria every day. Every day. They create this platform where they gossip, talk about irrelevant things. Even today, you find out that, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, this uh, Peter Doche's son comes out and he's creating one drama with this woman or the next. And the next day, what is his name? A maker, um, uh, whatever. Uh, the guy, actor. He's there. He found out that, oh, family drama actually works. Oh, relationship drama works. Why won't relationship drama works work for work when a lot the relationship has plummeted in Africa? When family ties, what ties, what makes a family is no longer there. This is one of our, oh, we have a lot to talk about here. We have a lot to talk about here. There is religion destroyed our family ties. Go and read in Noachebe's book. He said it. He said they have brought a knife. They've plunged a knife into what held us together as a family. Look at Africa. We are no longer. The relationship does not last like it used to. People will say, oh, it is a development. No, it is not. It is not. There is nothing that is happening today that has. There is no development that will come and will say, oh, it is because of. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Life has always been about improvement. It things has always improved. Things has it has always been like that with life. You understand? It's just that different your ideas have changed. Your ideas have changed. They have sold a dummy to you. They have sold something that is not real to you and now it's affecting your relationships. That is why your content creators even now profit from it. They know that talking about the problems in their relationship, you want to listen. You want to listen as a form of entertainment because you know there is no solution they bring in even to you. So you just want to be entertained. And everybody is going through relationship. Almost everybody is going through relationship issues because of what have been sold to us. You find wives who are seeing their general overseer as their lord. Somebody was telling me, <laughs> I finished online, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, and somebody said to me, you know, when I was listening to you, um, as soon as I was done listening to you, I went online, and the thing I saw was uh, this this uh, pastor and the, the church member who, uh, the pastor was beating the church member and saying, uh, Do, don't you know I'm your general overseer? Don't you know I'm your this and that? And this is a married woman. And she was saying, yes, uh, I, I will not leave the church. Even if you beat me, I will not leave the church. Uh, and the man said, yes, why should you? You know? And um, it, it was just crazy. They, they, I can't really tell you the story, how the story went. But it simply shows you that relationships are dysfunctional these days. A married woman, the husband is somewhere watching. There are lots. in front. I'm talking about something happening in front of the whole congregation beating a woman in front of the whole congregation and the woman was saying yes papa yes father yes uh, whatever do you think that woman has regards for her husband do you do you think that woman is like sarah they go to the the, the church they learn about sarah abraham and sarah calling the husband my lord do you think that woman would do that would behave like sarah called the husband my lord no because this has destroyed what relationship is to us. And today they are even bringing more destruction. They are bringing the issue of um, homosexuality. 
in and people are still the more you stick in their religion the more you are buying whatever they are selling and tomorrow you start saying no no it's okay it's okay do not judge do not judge it's okay and uh, therefore you have changed your the your moral values in the way they want you to and uh, maybe one day i'm not saying there's anything bad with uh, moral values and whatnot or what they are doing no 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 uh, you are not even God. I'm not God. I don't even know how the rules uh, uh, that this, the general rules that this world is meant to function in. But we understand one that functions for us. And one that works for us is what it's, it's always about the general consensus, not to force something on people and make sure that they obey what, you, what you're saying. And that is very wrong. And that is the point of what is happening now in religion and forcing whatever on people that is wrong if you go to say for instance south africa supports it then you respect them because it is their decision their law allows it you respect them there is nothing wrong with that you respect them because that is what they have chosen to 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 do but you cannot force people to do it now that is wrong it's like me forcing them to say no do not do this and i force them with the barrel of the gun now that is very very wrong we must understand that. So they have created social support in order to maintain their strong uh, uh, commitment in overcoming, in, in adapting, in accepting and adapting to whatever situation that they are facing. This is one of the coping mechanisms of, um, of people who are going through psychological challenges. You build relationships with people who you know are uh, this person. Funny, funny person. And when you look at that funny person, the things he says doesn't contribute to your life in any way. He just keeps saying things that doesn't contribute to your life in any way. You build relationship with family members who only make you happy. Make you forget your trouble. Not those who open up your minds. You build relationships with friends who just want you to know the happening places not those who open up your minds they build relationship with uh, uh they use community resources in order to oh we we are doing uh, empowerment and what is the empowerment they f bring out hundred thousand naira and they put in football and people go there entertain themselves and forget their sorrows and that is it the time that people come back from all corners of the world that people are supposed to sit down and have a conversation they don't they stay in their field cheering yay is a go some people even fight over it villages brothers even fight over it they create they use your resources your community resources in order to create such instead of providing support for you instead of using that money to say okay even if it is one person in this community that we must use this to start up a business for not even outside just in this community let we uh, us use this money and develop a place where this person will be uh, if your community is probably um close to the river close to wherever okay buy fishes and uh, something as small as that you know buy even if it's ube sell something as little as that contribute in one way or the other to the development but no because the people are going through psychological issues they need an outlet to express themselves and they give you an outlet to express yourself and to discourage you from having a conversation with people who that is the time that everybody is gathered have a reasonable conversation no you are distracted from doing that and then they create these groups where you go to social media and all of that these groups that gives you a sense of belonging uh i i remember in nigeria they create a lot of groups that talks about all they do is talk about what is it called again what are these people called again you know those people who tell you everything is possible and not really give you any um help any way of making those things possible they just tell you oh, i believe it oh believe it and all of that 
lots of that. You you join, you belong, you belong into one of those groups, and just as for a sense of belonging. Look at cultism. People just want to belong. They just want to belong. Why? Because of mental, psychological problems that Nigeria has caused. And then, finally, I want to talk about, okay, not finally, uh, we have two more two more coping mechanisms that um, people who are going through psychological problems develop. And another is religion. Uh, um, I will open up the lines very soon and uh, so that we can have a conversation. This is a very long topic, and I just try to take things easy so that we can go on our own and um, think on these things. Religion and spirituality is also another way of um, religion. Let me leave it at religion because spirituality is totally different from religion. So religion is another way of... Um, <laughs> uh, uh, it is a, another way of coping, finding a way to cope. It is a very serious coping mechanism. When you look at the countries with the most number with the you know higher in poverty countries that are higher in poverty you find out that most of those countries are very highly religious because religion offers you a sense of belonging it offers you social support network it offers you acceptance which is a sense of belonging and it offers you comfort so basically, religion offers you hope and comfort. And there is nothing wrong with these things, hope, having hope and having comfort. But on what basics? Are you having false hope? Are you having false comfort? Are you comforting yourself for nothing? For nothing that you should seriously cry about and take care of it? Are you, are you being comforted, being given hope? For a hopeless situation, a situation you know that you cannot fix, just like Nigeria. You are being given hope as the giant of Nigeria. You go outside, you fly the flag of Nigeria high, whereas you understand that Nigeria is irredeemable. You understand that Nigeria is unworkable. But because of that hope, because of that sense of belonging, you go out there, you, you, you want comfort, you want to belong. You want to be part of that. That is what religion does. Religious beliefs and practices can provide a sense of meaning and purpose. Even when you do not see that purpose, when you do not see the meaning, when you don't see the effect of what you are doing physically happening, when you do, you keep praying, oh, uh, um, let, uh, uh, what's the prayer of that pastor? He was he went to somewhere in Europe and was praying for winter to become <laughs> summer. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one said um, the Ukraine and Russia war will stop in how many days? I don't know. All these people and their, their, their crazy prayers. And it just provides you a sense of meaning and purpose. When you already, you can see that this thing you've been doing is not changing. If your grandfathers did it and nothing happened. And it's still the same thing. But religion says to you, without season, keep doing it without season don't change don't waver if you once you waver ah uh, it's gone once you don't pay money ah uh, it's gone they give you conditions and give you a purpose something that you have to keep doing every single day until you die that is a purpose they give you that purpose of no this is the way so when you do it today and it doesn't work they tell you ah oh, don't worry your time is not the time of god you don't sit back and calculate and say, actually, actions are supposed to be reciprocated. They are supposed to be um, effective. No, they tell you, no, your time is not the time of God. And then you keep living in ignorance. You keep going there every single day because every single day becomes worse. And they, you still go there, rely on them for solace. You rely on them for comfort. And you never stop. You keep going back there because they have offered you the only place that gives you acceptance, that gives you a social network support, and that gives you hope. Purpose. Keeps you busy. That is purpose. A misguided purpose that keeps you busy every single day. 
So we are still talking about the effects of um, Nigeria, the psychological effects of Nigeria on Nigerians. And the more we get to understand people, the more we can relate with them better. The more Nigerians can be able to relate with each other. If this information, we can allow Nigerians to really sit down and listen to it, then they can be able to relate with each other better. You understand that um, there are people who would just listen to this program and not even share it. And every day they are listening. But there is not a single effort that they are making. Not a single effort. Maybe they are ashamed of wanting change. They are ashamed of trying to better themselves. Because you have adapted you have found a way to adapt to the Nigerian situation. And that leads to self-care. Self-care. You cannot take care of yourself properly until you understand fully yourself. Until you understand yourself fully, you cannot take care of yourself. And thing is, the Nigerian system, the psychological impact is that you want to take care of yourself, but you do it wrongly. That is why every single boy is jumping into the next money-making scheme. Every single woman is jumping into the next money-making scheme just because they want to take care of themselves. And you know what? It is always a misguided uh, a, a line because you must understand that Mental health is more important than any other. You first take care of your mind before the body because the mind controls the body. The body is important. The mind is important. There is always a, um, a scale. The mind is number one. You find people eat three times a day, but they don't even read three times a day. You find people eat three times a day. When they see a billboard, they pass. They don't even want to read a billboard. They don't even want to read a billboard. They don't put their mind through mental exercise. Then how do you think your body will function? How do you think your body will function? Self-care, it includes engaging in activities that makes you happy. Not the ones, you know... Because the fact that self-care involves engaging in activities that makes you happy, it becomes easy for one to now, those who are psychologically impaired as a result of Nigeria, to engage in one that makes them happy, forgetting that there is no, this happiness is just a, a blur. This is not real. This is only temporary. How can that be self-care? How can you be happy temporary, temporarily? Do you understand that that reputation, that reputation is enough to, to, to make the problem even bigger? That reputation is enough to make the problem bigger. It is better that you are sad and you face it one time and you solve it. Being sad for a point, being in a negative situation for a point will force you to find a solution. It will force you to find a solution. But being sad and then you get a little dose of happiness and then you get sad, you get a little dose of happiness, it keeps you in that circle. You, you keep being in that circle. You think you are taking care of yourself by that one second of happiness, that second of uh, hey, excitement. No. No. You are still in that circle. So now I will open up the line so that we can really have a conversation um, about this, uh, what we are talking about. You can call in and um, let us know what you think. Let us know how we can better manage ourselves and how we can better uh, take away ourselves from this um, uh, mental subjugation that Nigeria has caused. And uh, as we go forward, you can tell us what you think, uh, especially about what is happening in the news, and then let us take it from there. While I am waiting for your call, let me read this news for you. While I am waiting for your calls, let me read this news for you. Okay, I haven't actually given you the number, haven't, have I? 
Okay, let me quickly give you the numbers while I bring you news about why and how Nigeria is doing what it is doing. If you want to be part of this program, all you need to do is dial plus two seven plus two seven seven eight. Plus two seven seven eight zero six four five four five seven plus two seven seven eight zero six four five four five seven and um, remember that today is the nineteenth of February twenty twenty four and the time now is thirty minutes past the hour of six in the holy and blessed land of biafra we this program is from 5 a.m until 7 a.m do not forget to join us every morning as we have a conversation that affects our lives every single day to have a conversation that affects us every single day now look at um this news from sahara reporters and you find out why nigeria is a mess why nigeria is causing psychological problems for nigerians it says here nigerian government declares central bank staff others wanted for forging ex-president buhari's signature to steal 6.2 million dollars now let, this is this is what um obtains from nigeria there is no nigerians don't have jobs even those who have jobs, their jobs are not paying. And Nigerians are now forced into this because the government itself created crime as the only avenue to succeed. The only avenue to succeed. People who are criminals are those who are respected in Nigeria. The president is one. Their president is one. The vice president is another. I mean, these, these are things of public records that you can find. The vice president... Uh, Shetima, a terrorist was found in his house. He was harboring a terrorist. Somebody who bombed a church, a cathedral. One of the highest terrorists you can talk about in this world. He was found in his house as a governor, when he was a governor. And he was compensated with the position of vice president. So this is what obtains in Nigeria. This is what obtains in Nigeria. This is why Nigerians are having psychological issues. Now, I must say that Nigerians, Nigeria has severe psychological impact on Nigerians. That is for sure. Do not look at it in any other way. And this psychological impact, like we have mentioned, they lead to low self-esteem. They lead to mental health issues. They lead to lower life expectancy. But the, the truth of the matter is that individuals going through traumatic experiences can get better. Now, if you look at all the um, coping mechanisms that I, I mentioned, you find out that you can use any of them positively in order to impact a positive change in your life. As a Nigerian, you can use any of them positively. For instance, acceptance and adapt adaptability, you can accept the fact that nigeria is not working nigeria cannot work that is how you accept the fact that nigeria is unworkable nigeria cannot work and then you adapt yourself to that fact that simple fact that nigeria is unworkable you adapt yourself to it and stop looking for alternatives that are not workable now number two is also the social support networks you find social support networks like ipob like radio biafra social support networks like this that supports that challenges your mind the psychological challenge that gives you a challenge encouragement that gives you support positive impact that you work you're able to move from the negative to the positive that is for sure then the next one i said religion you can be able to come to a position of understanding that, hey, religion is actually a tool. I said yesterday that religion, there is no difference between religion and political parties. That is why politicians and, re and religious leaders, they work well together. Religion was used as a way of making people politicians, of making sure that if you are a PDP member, you cannot vote for a whatever other party member you will support you don't even care how that person that your party 
uh, brought out as their candidate ap appeared. You don't even care if somebody brought the person in, some bad person somewhere brought him in. You don't care. As long as this is your party member, you are there to support. That is what religion has done. It has blinded us to several things. And then self-care. When you understand these things, you can use these things positively. For instance, engaging in activities that brings joy and relaxation can be positive. For instance, you, pro you bring programs that you know have lasting impact. For instance, we, had, we have several programs on I in IPOB, protest and all of that. This is a way of taking care of yourself. I call her, you, you, you are live on Radio Biafra. I hope you, you know you are live on Radio Biafra. Please introduce yourself and go ahead with your opinion. Yeah, good morning. We do the radio. So, Chima, Mbalale. It's a good thing. My name is Limes Marzi Obasi. I'm calling from Bessel Land of Biafra. Our leader Limes Marzi Namdo Kutukukano, Amadike one of Biafra land. As a Chuku Okuka Biama is our God, Biafra is our religion. On this hallowed platform is where we worship. Mazi, you are talking about the, the psychological that is disturbing Niger. See, what is disturbing us is what we live on and what we cherish. When you see a criminal buying a car, you did not think about where the person get the money, what is the work of that guy to make such money, you said you tap his blessing. You tap his blessing. You are tapping the blessing of criminals. That is why evil is going on in Nigeria. Nobody cares. Nigeria is a place where everybody is like evil things. Evil things. So look at the so-called the readership we have in the zoological. Starting from beginning, starting from the one to now, you created many things. Nigerian can live to read their textbook. They will go and start watching BB Niger. Nigerian can live where they can answer question and answer on television. They will go and be watching uh, Z World. Telemundo. Nigeria can live where they can learn something that can make betterment of their life. They will go and following people's women in the, or in the hotels, swimming, swimming pool there, going around naked, trying to copy something can destroy their life. Look at our land today. Everybody is wearing bone shorts. Everybody is not men that want to show their lap. You see the problem we have. Nobody is talking about what is disturbing us. Everybody is moving away from reality. They are just copy something that can make them look like they are normal. That is what is killing the zoological. They don't think. They are think, you see somebody now, that is why somebody can come and tell you that the relationship is no more working, this and that. No, we cause it by ourselves. We follow things that is not our culture. We destroy ourselves by telling people that is faking ourselves. You see somebody, all right, you went to, to occasion. Because you went there, you see some able men carrying money. Money they know that if you even if you share it to your kinsmen, it means nothing. But they will be throwing it so that the people will see that you have money. This is only in Hebrew people in our land. That is only in the whole world. That is where I see all I will see all those type of things. But in the average, no running water. Why, why do you want to destroy people's mind? That you have money, 
you have this, you have that, you can throw money. But in your own case, man, no running water. We still carrying, we still carrying water on our head. You are not ashamed to talk the reality, something that disturbing us, not to fake, to make sure that people as you see you gara gara. All those things that make Nigerian government, all these evil politicians can do whatever they are like, nobody questioning them. In com coming to religion, my brother, that is where we, we go down straight. Because you see somebody like eleven fathers, they went to school, stay in school nine years, learning. Instead of coming out to show what they are in, what they are think is to make sure telling you something with sweet you sweet your ears, sweet your mind, telling you during so 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 time. Now this this happened, but the one that is happening in our present, Mazin Nambi can come out and said the way we are going is not normal. We should retreat our step. We should ask questions in everything we see, not to Ngozi Gadiri in that floor, my brother. I ask you, my brother, if somebody telling me that you are a criminal, I did not know, I did not see, I believe that you are a criminal. That is what these people are teaching us. Somebody will tell you that God will fight your battle. That even if Fulani come and tell you, only really God is supposed to fight that, but not you. You ask that person. Does it mean that Fulani was not created by the same God? How can you be telling people lies day and night, and you continue telling them lies? And you see somebody who come out, said no. And you know that Nigerian government does not like good things. They are like to somebody who will be destroying people so that you cannot touch their own side of it, so that they will be progressing. Every day, Nigerian politicians are every weekend. They are going to a, abroad, Western world, as the way we normally go to um, weekend uh, um, holiday like that. But when they went there, they will see that the, the, the society they are went to is normalized. Everybody is moving normal because our people in Azafa, like uh, our comrade who, who answered Oleke. My brother, if our people think, you know that Ekele Oleke, you can never be a um, you can never be a teacher, be this, be uh, marketer at the same time. You cannot be uh, Barrow pusher, be a cameraman at the same time. You can never be a doctor and be you uh, and be uh, no, at the same time. All those things we're supposed to think because when you enter the society, a barrow that is telling you a thing, a cutter, when you take a do early morning. Go drop all every year. We're supposed to love ourselves. Know that wherever you find yourself, continue doing the good things. Not what these people are telling us. And everybody hoping. If all of us and enter politics, who will rule each other? Like now, Zoologica, all their mind now is politics. Because that is where you can go. You make money overnight. You can steal. You have people now. Police is their, their guiding. Police. This is where I saw a criminal guided by police. Yeah, yeah. All these things that make us, make us look, look like we are not women again. Everybody is now pushing. All the zoological, the average zoological want to travel abroad ask yourself and ask your pastors who are praying for you to get visa. Mm. Is it God from heaven that build that place they are running to? Mm. Let us open up, ask questions so that we can retreat ourselves the way we think. We are going down. Get their friends to read. We want to make a change. We want to, people to start asking questions. Thinking about how we can. Rebuild our land. Rebuild the good society can't 
we can be peaceful, moving like all now human beings on earth. Great difference, support ESN, remove fear from your eyes. Remember, we are the people who can save ourselves. We are those that created by Eze Chukoku Jam. Give us a true leader. Since after the war, Igbo people have no leader. Until Mazin Namdi can come out and say enough is enough. So we must to do the will. We, we saw our leader set the straight load so that we can follow and rebuild our land. So support our leadership, stay together to, with our leadership, contribute, show your own interest, show your own water yeah. to liberate your people. We want you to bless you Thank for you. your good work. Bless All the dear friends, stay together with us. Thank you very much, Mazi. I appreciate your contribution. Um, he mentioned certain things I didn't even mention, I didn't even think of. And that is why I love when you call in and you talk about, uh, you present your own ideas, you present your own case, you understand, and make it constructive. That is what I love about uh, this, this program, because we learn every single day. He talked about the fact that um, the, one of the psychological impact of the zoo Nigeria on people is that people stop asking questions. People stop asking questions. They hear uh, a, a python swallowed money. They say, ah, Niger. They, they just move on. No questions asked. That's just it. No questions asked. And he he just touched on it. He also touched on um, what's the this uh, how what's this other thing he he said that I wanted to touch on. He also touched on the the fact that people now, the behavior, people do not want to care. People don't want to care. It's just like that. Let's just, whatever today, whatever tomorrow comes, let's just see. Yeah. And he also touched on people not doing any other thing to take care of themselves. Today, you are being asked to support ESN. But yesterday, people went and gave money to Rome. Yesterday, they went and gave money to these criminal Yoruba pastors. They went and gave money to these criminal uh, uh, pastors who are talking nonsense. They went and gave money to some people who are telling them to oh, buy Fanta and do one or two things and you will get money. They, they, that, that is, people are now not interested in finding solution to their problem. Rather, they go on social media and start uh, behaving whichever way that they want. Whichever way they want. Um, somebody did call me on straight call, and I was unable to answer that. Um, if you are the person, you can call back in. Uh, um, you can call in and pick up. I have a caller on the line. Caller, you are live on the radio. Please go ahead. Uh, introduce yourself and your opinion. There Bazen banale wan le mwoki. Tukwe ki kapya. Chikero wan ni yile. Wendi mwoki rebye bie bie. Ya goze re mge. Goze re had call. Had call bia France. More importantly, had call IP. Kwe ki kapya ma wangon. The honor of life and death. Be with us. This is our land, and we will get it back. No, whatever it costs, we are coming. Unfortunately, the the call um wasn't uh, disconnected. I have another caller on the line. Caller. You are live on the radio. You are live on Radio Biafra. Please introduce yourself and go ahead with your opinion. I hope the network is better. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, Mazi. It's Oshiba Mbanani. Yes, it's Joko uh, K.K. Colin from Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Um, you know, and I thank God for everybody. Uh, at the same time, I thank God for the life of our leader, Mazi Namunde Kano. You know, I don't um, have much to say about him because I do believe that he already know and understood 
the uh the meaning of freedom fighting and struggle so you already know so uh and he already made up his mind the only thing now we, we owe him is to show him as our support you know yes at the same time uh based on the uh, the, uh this early morning topic my brother um i don't know where to start i don't know where to start our people have lost everything and um i'm beginning to think that all this um lack of manners are being championed by our people Igbo people from what i'm seeing it no whatever any bad attitude any foreign rejected manners you will see eating on our people. You will see some of our little women talking about private part. They don't even hide it. In, in fact, I think the zoo government just left them. Let them do whatever they like. And they, they, they even enjoy it. Hmm? I don't know where to start. You see people having fun on Poto Poto, being comfortable in suffering enjoying playing you know i don't even you see some of them performing some i don't know on on, pot -a -pot, on death, being happy our road yes we build some houses but even our environment you can't even tidy you know consult our road to be workable eh? i don't know i don't know how our, 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 we are reasoning and we are happy comfortable if you walk one time i went to nigeria one evening i was in atasapa i just view all on the street what i saw on the street was rubber chairs different colors with beer palos. i said what, what else can we go and have for just normal go out like walk in the park sit down in the park have a quiet time no we don't we don't go sport <laughs> You see, you see, you see, you see color, many types of particular color music everywhere. So, how can these people think? Trump needs noise. Yeah? How can you, you, you and because, because quiet, to be reasonable, to use, to be creative, you need a quiet environment. How can somebody, Robert, Robert, Biapalo, Biapalo, area from, one point to another. Noise, noise. Move up. Hmm? Everything is disorganized. Hmm? We are, we are, we are, I don't know where to start. Sometimes if I wanted to call all this why, but I just, I don't know where to start. We, our people are, everything is disorganized. Yeah. Everything is disorganized. And that, now that Nigeria need to be, need to be clean. Everything need to, we need to start afresh. We have no, we have no template. We have nothing we are working on. We have no, no plan, no agenda. Countries have plans for for in fifty years, in you know, and start working it gradually. But we have no plan, no no no, no, no national goal. So how can we? So where we where are we heading? To disaster. To disaster. We have no plan. We can't bring out such uh, this is our, our budget in the next 10 years. This is where we are heading. Mm -hmm. hmm? well, we are talking about, about, about people people celebrating criminals. Our the people that are ruling us are criminals. Are criminals. Eh? Look at that guy that died in here in America. I'm sorry to I'm sorry that I'm using him, but I have to use him. The guy, you went to banking, you, you people of God, you people are doing with just to team up with the house people. You people are selling dollars and setting up prizes. And you see, you see their village people, praising them. Hmm. Hmm? So, what, so what, do you, what do you expect the ordinary person, what do you expect an, uh, just an ordinary person, a layman to do? Hey, you know, Mazi, a conscientized person, that business alone would have built a lot of people. In, in, in Evil Land. That's oh. bank alone. Oh, uh, cool. Given so much loan to our people to start up businesses. Micro promoting. Help all these all these videos. Mm. Create a lot of opportunities for people. Huh? Mm. Hmm? 
we are in this country during 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 uh, COVID. You know, I came to this country. I got me uh, briefly. I was shot in this country when I came here. I was shot. I'm not. I'm, I'm still using wheelchair now. Sorry. To hear. But during that COVID, during that COVID, you know what happened? I don't even know what happened. They just sent me a, a, a check of a thousand dollars. Wow. Here. So in, in Nigeria, people are throwing bread to their city. <laughs> you know, so they are home for having foods mm. for people in food. Eh, food the nation wanted to share people. They are hiding it for people yeah. in Nigeria. Can you see the type of people you are associating with? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hmm? Thank you. Nigeria. But the moment with you, I don't know where to start. I don't know. We need a template to start working with. We need something to work with. We can't just lose something. It's crazy. If I, if I, if I, if I, if I IPOP need to come, we need, we need to come up with, with a template mm. where we are heading. Agenda. Tell people what we are, what we want to achieve. What is our aim? Because this is our way of getting people. Tell people our 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 our, our aim. That where we are heading. That, read it. That is Biafra. They yes. Read it, read it, read it. Put it on your website. Mm. It is. Yeah, and what we are, what we are, what we are, ready down. What we are trying, what we are achieving. So so time. Do put it in paper, in black and white. It's this is what we, from here to here. This is what we want to achieve. From here to here, this social, 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 social amenity we need to create our people. You know, write it down. So people can go there and study it. Yeah. What our agenda are, our manifest, our manifesto. Okay. You have been here. Thank you very much, Mazi. I appreciate your contribution. No, uh, thank you. Yes, my I just called. In, this is my call. I just called to. This is my first time of calling. I've been okay. playing, writing comments, but I just say, let me just call and greet you because you are doing a great job. Huh? I appreciate. That boy, this you know, I'm calling. I just going to greet you. That's all. But I'll right now keep in touch. Please do. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Where do you start from with Nigeria? Where do you start? Uh, the fact of the matter is that we cannot create a direction for Nigeria. We can only create a direction for ourselves, and that is why Biafra must come. And our direction is Biafra. We already created one for ourselves, and that is Biafra. And our template is there. Uh, the restoration of Biafra is the key. And for freedom fights, there is no time limit. Uh, you have to give your entire life to getting what you want. It's like when you are going to a place. If you haven't arrived at that place, you can't just stop on the way. You have to keep going until you arrive. So when Biafra comes, Onyendu already talked about the template, already talked about how it will work. I mean, we already know how it will work. You understand? It is a place where even you will want to make it work. And if you do not want to make it work, the law will ensure that you get in line, that you get in line. But Biafra, but Nigeria, there is no way you can make something work for Nigeria because you are not in control of Nigeria. But when you listen to this gospel, then you can actually at least um, uh, be able to make some changes in order to get you to where we are going when Biafra comes. I have a caller on the line and caller, uh, welcome to Radio Biafra. Please go ahead in five minutes, introduce yourself and your opinion. Ndeo. Good morning to you, Mazi Sochima. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings to you. My beloved brothers and sisters, Chukwu Kikabi is our strength. And we must continue on the right side of the truth. My name is Hugo. I'm calling from the blessed land of Biafra. Mazi, you see, there's something I want to hit on this morning based on our, the discussion, what you just said. And uh, according to the program that our brothers, the Riverland area, they had yesterday, they hit a point which I commend them. Uh, you see, many people don't value our leader, Mazi Nande Kano. And I want to tell you, if you don't value Nande Kano, and the kind of work Chukwu Kikabiyama gave him to do for me and you. It means you are a very ungrateful human being. And in your generation, you will continue to suffer. For those of them that is ganging up or you are making a wrong move, either for you to continue to go against what Nandekani is doing, let me tell you this. 
there is nothing in this life that you as a person can do to take another man's glory or to inherit somebody's gift your gift remains your gift my gift remains mine what you need to do is when you see me doing something good you compliment me you say keep it on then you do your own envy jealousy can never help you to inherit another person's talent that is my message to you Mazi, any good citizens of biafra must support the leadership of ipob popularly known as dos the stand of dos when it comes to what the zoo the most evil country on earth i call it a place where the devil is residing go and investigate by the activities of the life loss in every day the life of innocent people being loose they kill by numbers and, and the nothing happens sickness is doesn't have any place in the zoo any longer sickness is somewhere watching how fellow human beings are killing their fellow human beings yes you know before we do say <laughs> oh yeah this time around the zoo doesn't allow sickness to kill any longer they are the ones they will go overnight and kill thousands of people and they will call it massacre from a particular race of devil so let me tell you this if you don't support the leadership of ipod you are making a mistake and let me give this explanation a bit for you for all of you that is you have the eyes but you are blind do you know that it's, it will be very difficult for you to bribe let me say one two three four five person dos is not one person i think i've come to this platform and say so many things that will help you if you are reasoning if you have a reasoning a thinking for god do it's not one person some of you think it is only them. some of you think it is they say that there are so many of them they don't even know each other so it will be very very difficult for you to bribe such people yes and at the same time it is going to be very difficult for you to convince them because this one will agree the other one will not agree according to what our brother he said some of them they don't even know each other so for you that is believing that uh, i want you to think twice rather it is going to be very easy for one person to be convinced and bribe and the person that refused to do that is our leader the rest of the people that is claiming to be a leader fear them run away from them i'm telling you this for you to know this because the truth can never be can never ever in this life be covered if you know the truth you will say the truth and the, that truth will set you free but anyone that doesn't know the truth that is how you'll be moving sheepishly yeah. when you hear from this side you accept it when you hear from this side you was you sometimes you are confused but i don't want you to be confused one two three four five person heading a particular thing they have a very strong spirit they will continue to do that it is not easy for you to come and mislead them i'm telling you for you to know this so i'm saying this honest man that chuko kakabema sent to us we must continue to support him whatever he asks us to do Mazi, thank you so much thank you very much Mazi. i appreciate your contribution this morning thank you very much i mean it, it is thank not you. even uh something that i mean every right person every right thinking person is supposed to know this it's supposed to know this i mean uh, the, the 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 point is let let me just um touch on what he said in just some seconds the point is if you belong in an organization you know why you went into that organization you know why you are supporting that organization the moment you feel like the organization is not the same thing or working the way you want it to work, what do you do? You either find exactly the evidence you have. If you are not given any evidence, then do not ever start speaking and talking ill of people. And if you have an evidence and you do not want to go, then all you need to do is live there. Don't go there to create chaos in some place that you did not 
create it doesn't even make sense it doesn't even make sense and most people are talking out of emotions but this is freedom fighting and nothing will come cheap i have the last caller on the line last caller please go ahead introduce yourself and your opinion Ndeo. Which ordained their plans as his children. And the IPOP divinely ordained the special to set his people free. That's why we are peaceful. On this earth, no organization is like us. We are one family, one family. Because every other their friends that are not in IPOP. It doesn't mean you are not a deaf. But shut up, shut up. Because you people have sued us. You have the governors, the ASIS, the PG, everything, Mibo Congress in America. Why is this charge that we tell the given to our leader by the most high who sends him? And imagine banal, let me tell you the truth. They say this Britain, not the fear. They still say, I don't get this word. That's why they have the impetus to give us English name. Okay, they must be English name. I said, go and check. I will see the Kwenye Naka. And let's hope to be certificate of slave. That is the leaders we have. Aruma. Aruma, they're the Jonathan. They're Jonathan. Jonathan, are we one name? They're the Jonathan. That's why he's fighting. Nobody will, 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 will slave him. Not even your religion. Not even your religion. And all the religious leaders here in the Afro land. I know the shit, Yaka. Can I tell you a lot? They are putting a lot. 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 ワンアイウェルメンアライカイウオイチンゴカナライアジュエプルビオアテティティダスティネビアフラウェンデコマカイモエオソケシュスケオモエオソモエアデマオケシビセアイアイナディビシェチセチェテプレゼントアメリカビ
the people we are talking to are not uh, reciprocating because they are still plugged into the system and it's very hard to unplug. I'll leave you with this clip. Please pay attention to this.